Hey, this is Paul with Wondershare eDraw, and in today's video, we are going to help you write better essays using very effective mind mapping techniques. And it really doesn't matter what class you're taking. If you find yourself struggling or wanting to improve your writing techniques, whether it's making better arguments or sharing your points more effectively, then this is the video for you. So with our helpful and easy to follow step-by-step -step guide, we're going to help you write better academic essays using these mind mapping techniques. And of course, if you like these kinds of videos and you want more helpful tutorials to improve your writing skills, then be sure to subscribe to our eDraw YouTube channel. And like most things, if you want to do it effectively, you should start with a good plan or outline. And with our essays, that of course is our thesis statement. Of course, having a thesis sets the tone of your writing and lets your readers understand what to expect within your essay. And so once we have a logical explanation for what our essay is going to be about, the rest of the process becomes much easier. Now, in order to form an effective thesis statement, we need to decide what question are we answering with our essay. So this is considered the essay planning stage where you brainstorm ideas for different thesis questions that you want to approach. And of course, during this stage, we want to consume and understand as much information about our topic in question as possible. That way, we know what information we want to share within our essay. So use all the resources you have available, whether it's the library, the internet, or anything else that is relevant to your topic. So now that you have your thesis statement for your essay, creating a mind map for your essay is actually pretty easy. So let's go over a few examples of how we can use mind mapping to write better essays. And so with eDraw open, we can either start with one of our blank templates, one of the local examples, or if we click on more templates, we'll find a lot of other user created and shared examples. And even just at the top here, we see that there are a lot of great options related to writing essays. Here's an example of narrative, argumentative, synthesis, and a whole bunch more. So let's say, for example, we like the argumentative essay. We can click on duplicate and you'll see here how it actually has this beautifully laid out outline where we start with our topic our introduction, and then it spiders out into these individual points that we want to share under each. So for the purposes of this video, we'll actually create something very similar to this. One of these blank templates here, if we want to do that. So a mind map is basically what we're doing. So we've got our main idea and what's timely right now, chat GPT. So an idea that I had was should schools embrace chat GPT. There's a lot of controversy around this topic right now. We can also break this down into our intro, paragraph one. So I'm just going to call it para one, para two. We can add subtopic and drag that down there. And this will allow us to add another point. So let's say we want to have three points of para three, this main outline here with our thesis written in, we can use the mind mapping tool in a lot of ways. One, we can just start to brainstorm ideas for how we want to fill in these different categories. What do we want to say in our intro? What do we want to say in our paragraph one, two, and three? And you can rename these to argument one, or pro one, pro two, con one, con three. For the sake of keeping it simple right now, I'm going to come up with one positive, one negative aspect, and maybe kind of like a neutral aspect regarding ChatGPT. And I like to remember what my main points are. So I'm going to consider it the pro, a con, ChatGPT can cause students to be lazy. And for a neutral point, I'm thinking about how it's got the creative aspect of it, but sometimes it's not very reliable. It gives unreliable or incorrect information. So this gives us the main outline for our essay right now. We've got our thesis, our main points, and of course, 
you know how an intro works. That's where you basically summarize all the points that you're going to be talking about for the most part and kind of like the objective of your essay. If we're just in the complete brainstorming stage, we can do this multiple times, switch this around, and again, just keep trying out different pros, cons, and neutral points that we want to discuss. But let's say we're happy with this right now. Now we can go into other subtopics. That's where we can have specific points that support the main topic here. So under pro, ChatGPT allows us to quickly research and learn new information. Using this AI tool, con, ChatGPT causes students to be lazy. Obviously, some students take the easy way out and just copy and paste a ChatGPT's response. And here's another great thing that we can do within our mind mapping. We can create multiple topics. We hit OK. And here are our other points. And we can easily drag them around. We can just drag them right there. And that's a quick and easy way to bullet point your thoughts with our rough mind map complete. We have this amazing tool at our disposal that allows us to follow our train of thought. We know where we're going with our essay, what points we want to share. And as you get more and more detailed with this, all you're basically doing is turning them into full sentences. You're also then putting in your resources and you've got a terrific argument created with your pros, your cons, your neutral points, and then put it all together you should have a very solid essay. So that's how we can use our mind map to create effective essays. But let's say we want to prepare for an exam. How can we then use our mind maps? So when it comes to studying and memorizing information, I think it's very important to know what you need to know. So in this case, what are the topics and the subtopics that we need to know about the subject? So we can actually go back into eDraw and we'll actually use the same template of mind map. And so in comparison to the essay we just went over, where we started with our thesis, our intro, and our various paragraphs, and the various points that we want to include in said paragraphs, here it's more of what is the topic and what are the things that I need to know about the topic. It can be just a little bit more general because it's about the topic itself. So let's say we're learning about ChatGPT. What are the things that I want to know? Let's say, when was it founded? What are its main uses? And then again, we can add additional points. So another simple way, just as we showed before, we can hit multiple topics. What are the other things that I should know about ChatGPT? How do you access ChatGPT? What are its limitations. I'll just say what are popular examples prompts using chat GPT. And just like that, we have our main spider diagram discussing chat GPT. Now we can take this further. Let's say, again, we know we're going to have a test or we're going to have some kind of assignment in the future where we need to discuss and the topic is going to be ChatGPT. So if these are the main things that we learned within our course. Now we can actually create a new map. And going back to our previous one. So let's say, what are its limitations? So now we can actually go under our main idea. What are chat GPT's limitations? And then again, from here, we can keep going. This is where we'll then put some of the things that we've learned about as far as its limitations. And now with a combination of map five and map four, and possibly six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on, where we actually take it even further, we'll have a lot of information stored, memorized, and hopefully actually comprehended. And when done so, let's say the assignment is to actually create an essay on ChatGPT. Now we've got all this information stored, then we can use 
this technique of mind mapping that we showed previously, either on the day or practice it in advance. And this helps us actually understand how to take this information, turn it into this, and then from there into a very powerful essay. And so speaking of effective essays, what are some of the main things that you should keep in mind when writing your essay? With most schools, they're teaching and looking for expository writing. So how do you write an effective expository essay? The first thing is that you want to remain neutral. It's very easy for us as humans to become biased and insert our opinions, our thoughts, our feelings. But with expository essays, we want to take a step back and just give the facts, the arguments as they're presented. Next, and this is something that students often struggle with when they're first starting, and that is using the third person. Not I, not me. Again, when we start to do that, that's where it becomes more personal. And being that we're just trying to give the facts and be factual, we want to avoid using the first person. And then going back to what we showed with our mind mapping, where we had our main topic and then all our subtopics, it's important that we're focusing on each point individually as opposed to jumping back and forth. It's not only difficult for the reader to understand, but it also makes your argument a lot less effective. Next, as we're presenting facts, it's very important that we actually share our resources. Not only so we seem credible as the writers, but if the readers want to learn more and dive a little bit deeper, they can use those resources and see firsthand where you're getting that information from. Lastly, if you want to write an effective expository essay, it's very helpful to use anecdotes, examples, testimonials. These things not only make your points seem more relatable, it's also a lot more easy for the reader to digest that information, especially if it is very fact heavy. Now, as a bonus tip and tying back to the examples we shared earlier, you can actually use tools like ChatGPT to help you with your essays. Maybe not to write the whole thing, because again, as we shared a little bit, that's not going to help you learn. It's not going to help you write or be creative. So we want to use ChatGPT to brainstorm. So this could be a great way to bullet point certain ideas, research information, use the tool as it's intended, as opposed to using the tool to create and represent you. And so the techniques that we shared today, including mind mapping and using spider charts, you should be able to effectively brainstorm your ideas, delve deeper into your ideas and structure out your essays. Not only that, but it also helps you digest, consume, and memorize your information too, whether it's for a future test or for the ability to write set essays in the future. Using tools like eDraw makes this a lot easier so you can actually visualize, keep track of, and reorganize your information just like that. Our tool is very accessible. It's available on iOS, Android, Mac, PC, basically any device, you're going to be able to access it. So let us know how you used eDraw for your mind mapping, spider charts, and how you can now create better essays in the comments down below. This has been Paul from Wondershare eDraw, and until the next one, we'll catch you later.